and Christine's sister, Susan, for those of you who don't know me. So I wrote a little speech for Christine and Sam, and I really hope they like it, and I hope everyone laughs and cries in the right spots. Okay. It was 1981, just after the winter, when my parents brought home my sweet baby sister. She had blonde hair and blue eyes and slept like no other. Finally, a playmate who wasn't my brother. <laughs> my new baby sister made life so complete, that perfect little face, so tiny, so sweet. Then Christine became a toddler, and all hell broke loose. The tantrums and meltdowns and sister abuse. She was precocious and stubborn, not easy to say. She only stopped crying when she got her way. So it's a damn good thing she grew out of that phase. Less tantrums and meltdowns made for easier days. So whoever knew that that devilish girl would become my absolute best friend in the world. <laughs> She's beautiful and clever, determined and witty, which you usually don't find in someone so pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Having said all that, there was no way that I would let her get married to just any old guy. <laughs> so Christine called me one day to tell me she'd met some cute Kiwi guy from the old internet. <laughs> I watched him quite carefully, protective of Christine. Was this Sam, another guy who turned out to be mean? But I could see before long, there was no need for my fear. His heart was of gold and his intentions sincere. They were a perfect match, that Christine and Sam. They both liked to run, watch Netflix, cook lamb. <laughs> Sam is smart, he is sweet, great things there are many but his two best assets are named William and Penny. Oh. <laughs> He's made my sister the happiest that I've ever seen. If you've watched them together, you know what I mean. Now as they venture out on their journey to the West, I wish them great joy and wish them the best. So please raise a glass to Christine and Sam and I'll turn it over to the best man. <laughs> She read it to me the other night. She's like, is that okay? I'm like, you're covered. You're good. Has everyone ever had that feeling that you just got sandbagged and <laughs> Susan said last night, she was like, oh no, she's a little quick. It's fine. So you still remind me of it. Way to go. That was beautiful. No idea. Uh, good evening, everybody. I'm Clark, um, and honored to be here to be Sam's uh, best man and to be here to celebrate these guys. Um, I'm going to be a little bit longer because I want to take a minute to say a few words, and I've also got a little bit of official business to cover. So I'll get to that. Um, but I first met young Samuel uh, when I was, I think, barely 25 years old. I had just finished my first campaign. I had moved to D.C., which is the first time uh, that really I had lived outside of Arkansas, uh, which is probably a surprise because I bet you thought I was from Jersey. Um, <laughs> but it was, I think, cool to come in, start a new job, and you know, stumble across this red-headed hipster Kiwi guy who knew more about American politics than I did. And I just thought that that was a pretty good sign and a harbinger of things to come. Sam, for his part, immediately loved me because he, I actually took over his job, allowing him to get promoted. So he passed along uh, what was a traditional first in DC, kind of gratingly low peon job, and just handed it my way and smiled, and we've been friends ever since. But I wanted to just say a couple things um, that I think through the years I've come to learn to find Sam. First of all, he is a doer. He's a man of action. I think he is a builder, and I think he is a believer that a lot of things are possible and that we can create our own future in a good way. And I really want to emulate that. Even in the early days, uh, he was already a connoisseur of the internet, an explorer even like Magellan. Uh, so 
finding all things smart and cool, whether it was like a sharp new tech article or just the latest video of a lizard escaping a pack of snakes. Um, <laughs> thank you for that. And Sam, I think also is, I think we know he is wise beyond his years, as his mom told me last night. Uh, oh yeah, he's been old since the minute he was born. So. But in all, thank you, Penny. In all sincerity, Sam, I think, is someone that would be the CEO of any company I would start. If I were foolish enough to run for office, you'd be my campaign manager. Um, you are just a, <laughs> my wife's saying, please don't. Um, <laughs> But you are, you have the qualities because you are always somebody that is there for me when life is challenging and you are a trusted friend. Um, and most importantly, I think there's a lot of people who know Sam in this room, he's always the first to just reach out and say, hey mate, checking in on you, how you doing, what's going on? Which I have always appreciated and I think um, that's a big part of why we have grown so close. Um, and lastly, as Susan said, I think anyone who can uh, play a part in raising people who are so smart and refined and just cool as Will and Penny are good in my book. You make eating gummy bears look really cool. So. And Christine, um, Mary is here, my wife, who lived in Brooklyn for the last year and working on the Hillary campaign or the League of Justice, as we like to call it. Um, sorry, sorry, no fault. Um, but a silver lining for me, going back and forth up to Brooklyn, was a chance to get to know you and spend time. And you are obviously beautiful, especially tonight. And you are even smarter than Sam. <laughs> yeah. You are passionate, and you are just like effortlessly easy to get to know and be a friend. Um, and so Sam has readily admitted to me that she is out of this league. And as he also told me, in, uh, early on, he knew from bidding, oh, please just don't F this up. Um, and sorry for that, but let me translate. Um, that's obviously guy speak for, oh man, I have hit the lottery and please do not let her go. Like literally don't let her walk out of here. So Christine, I think it's safe to say that Sam immediately knew you'd be a perfect partner in crime. Um, and to close, for my part, so I just wanna, I was thinking, Mary and I are just a week away from our seventh anniversary, and we got married uh, on the beach in Belize, and Sam was with us. And uh, I don't remember everything I said, but I remember closing the speech I gave that night to tell Mary how excited I was about getting married so we can go do big, bold things together. And I think of Sam, because uh, those who know, he has a ferocious little tattoo over on his left arm of this kind of jaguar cheetah type of situation, which I'll have to ask him about. But at the bottom of it, it says, be bold. And I think that is Sam's reminder to himself. And so I just want to say to both of you, as you become one, um, Christine and Sam, I want to challenge you both to share that charge, to be bold in your partnership, be bold in your love, and be bold in where you want life to take you. And I think with that in mind, you will do just fine. So, cheers. Well, cheers. Now, a quick bit. I get the honor of shifting gears and doing some official business, which is I have some messages from around the world uh, to share, uh, since this is an international wedding. And so the first is a quick one, and it is greetings from Matthew in Sydney, Australia and Grandma Thomas from Snells Beach, New Zealand, who wish the happy couple all the best for today and the coming years with their lives together. Here, here. And then the second one is a little bit more special, and I think this is a surprise, um, and so I'm not sure Sam is expecting this, but this is pretty fun, and part of my, part of my duties here, I got to, just over email, but got to know Sam's brother Pete a little bit. And so I had some words that Pete sent that he wanted me to share. And so these will be Pete's words. If I had more wine, I would probably try this in a New Zealand accent, but I'll spare you. Um, but this is from Pete, Sam's little brother in New Zealand. Hello, guys. So first of all, congratulations to the happy couple. Christine, I imagine you look incredible today. And Sam, I'm sure you did your best too, so just keep smiling. I'm honored to have a few of my words read out of my brother's wedding, as I am, of course, extremely disappointed that I can't be there in person. Sam didn't know this was coming, so I hope he likes surprises. And thanks to everyone for listening. 
Sam was always a great role model and an older brother. I looked up to him from the time we were both very young, or at least I did for a few years until he completely stopped growing at age seven. <laughs> he was always the smartest kid in his class and was never bothered that his classmates were like five years younger than he was. I wish I could be there to share some photos of Sam's younger years with you guys. It was probably best for Sam and for you, Christine. Uh, I can't do that today. You see him. Sam was a bit of an unusual looking child. I love her as a resistance, little brother attracts from afar. Um, bit of an unusual looking child with enormous horn rim glasses, mop of wavy red hair, and very large teeth. Um, okay, so the teeth aren't so bad, but I'm realizing now where our parents bought you that full face ski mask for our ski trips, and you still wore it on our summer travels. And we always did wonder why Sam was a little bit different from us as kids. Maybe it was the fact he was carried around in a suitcase in England as a baby and had an unfortunate pair of train doors close on his tiny little head. Or maybe it was the impact of rolling uncontrollably down the hill in a stroller after being left undetended at the top of said hill. I don't know. I don't know. Sam also had the benefit of some imaginary friends when he was younger, like Charlie, who Sam may think is sitting with him at the table right now. Yeah, we're going there. We're going all the way there. Uh, or his stuffed toy. It's interesting to learn that grandma is still keeping safe today. So all of this may explain why Sam became a bit of a social wizard online when the internet first came into his head, the trend he continues today. So we never quite figured out what was going on back then. Um, and I have to say that the 33 years I've been a younger brother to Sam has sometimes been um, character building. But through it all, you turned out pretty great, and I am very proud to be your brother. I also know that our younger sister, Kate, desperately wanted to be there to give an embarrassing speech, as you know she does well, Sam. But unfortunately, life hasn't allowed this to happen for her either. That being said, we can't wait to see both of you soon on your travels, and we'll be waiting eagerly to see wedding pictures and hear all about your awesome day. We love you both so much, Sam and Christine, and we're so happy that you guys have found each other. You guys are a perfect match. Christine, you're beautiful, funny, kind, and you have good taste. Our entire family, albeit a small one, are so happy and excited to now call you family. Oh. We love you and we appreciate you sticking with Sam through the thick, such as the trials of life, as well as the thin, the, you know, this situation. <laughs> but seriously, it has been an honor and over the years, I couldn't ask for a better big brother and a true example of a good-hearted, loyal, kind, passionate, enthusiastic, dead set, good guy. I know Sam will make an excellent husband for you, Christine. You're a fantastic couple, and I'm honored to have included in the celebration of your love and dedication to one another. Once again, congratulations to the happy couple on their wedding day. And before we raise our glasses, we're done, but I actually wanted to pull out and close with something that he didn't put in his speech, but was in an email to me. Thank you, Clark, for reading these most important words about my brother. I've never been one for public speaking, and I know if I were present, I'd be slightly overwhelmed. With an unusual pride and affection at seeing my big brother getting married to such an incredible bride and surrounded by such amazing people. So, my words now. Sam and Christine, I think that is testament to something I hope you both recognize, and I hope you remember. Whether friends or family, whether right here or halfway around the world, and not only today, but for the years to come, you are greatly loved. So we celebrate you, and we celebrate tonight. Cheers. Good stuff, huh? Folks, how about a big round of applause, please, for both of your VIPs in order of appearance. Our major of honor, Susan, doing a great job with her jokes. A big hand for your best man, Clark, doing a terrific job with his toast. <laughs>